All right, guys, it's a new week, which means it's a new episode of The Crimson Corner. I am your KSL Utah Utes insider, Michelle Bodkin. And along with me today to talk about a myriad of topics, because there's kind of a lot going on right now, is my good friend, Sammy Mora. Sammy is a former editor at the Utah Chronicle, the student paper up at the University of Utah. She and I were also co-workers at Ute Zone, and now we're just friends and uh, me- media peeps, uh, but keep in contact and all that good stuff. Still hang out and do some things. More girl power in the in the media market here in Salt Lake. Sammy, what's good? Um, it's really good. I would just like also to add mentor because you really mentored me a lot through this whole like process of like getting into the media. So like mentor is like in that list with like friend and like coworker and everything. So that's just a side note. But um, <laughs> I'm good. You know. There's a, like you said, there's a lot going on on the Hill right now. So it's a good time to be a Ute, I guess you could say. One could say that. One probably should say that. Uh, I mean, let's waste no time because like like we mentioned, there is a lot going on. I did not actually prep you on this one, but let's go ahead and talk about first how the men and women basketball teams are doing Uh, because... Uh, The women, I don't think, are that shocking. I think everybody thought that they would be pretty good coming into this thing. The men, though, have gone some extraordinary wins, including beating number four Arizona before Utah beat number four USC, which we will get into after this. Yeah, it's um, it's really interesting because, you know, I think the with the men's basketball team in particular there wasn't there was higher hopes than there were last season but I think at the same time like there was still a lot of question marks there was still a lot of things that needed to be like answered and I still think there is some of those questions around this team but at the same time I think getting that big win against Arizona I think was kind of what this team needed that team needed that like that gutsy big Mm -hmm. win that was going to um impact them and kind of tell them that they can hang with anybody because you know things were really low after they lost to Sam Houston State like that was one of those games that Utah should have won but lost so that one is it's it's interesting I I think there's I still think that this team is is there's going to be some losses that are still very questionable I think that's kind of where things are headed that's just my like my outside scope on things with this because um there's like I said there's question marks still around this team but the women's team on the other hand like whoo wee boy they are they're so fun so good they they are so good they are so fun to watch and I think they have a very 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 good chance of finishing non-conference play undefeated that's that's just where I see this at. They got through their hardest stretch because they played Oklahoma, they played Alabama, and they played Ole Miss, and they came out of that three game stretch undefeated. Um, obviously, they they um, won their most recent out of conference game, uh, Mississippi Valley State, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah, I it's it's, it's it was some part of combination that combination of those words. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, it was part of that Pac-12 SWAC. Um, alliance they have which so, is so cool really great love I love that. it um I will say that someone talked about as like a stat that they're like well the men's like if men's teams playing in the SWAC series like most of them have lost and I was like "Ooh, that's not good <laughs> well I believe that that is actually coming up on Thursday mm-hmm. uh taking on Jackson State they used to be fighting coach primes coach but... primes <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> who's now moving on to Colorado, which is exciting for the Pac-12. The fighting buffs. The fighting buffs, yes. Uh, I, I'm i looking forward to that coaching move. Oh, it's gonna uh, be, it, it's it was a chaotic. great announcement for the Pac-12. Uh, back to basketball, though. I, I'm i with you. The men's team, I still have some questions about their, I, and, and I 
they're gonna there's good they're going to lose in my opinion a few more head scratchers mm-hmm. uh but I also think they have it in them to beat a team or two still that like yeah. we don't necessarily expect and that's just kind of what I expected out of this team uh check you know check with the with the taking down Arizona we'll see you know where they head off to this women's team is interesting they are really good I know that they lead the country in several key stats mm-hmm. Pac-12 is hard though in women's basketball I and I don't know I don't know who who or what may trip them up Stanford's no joke obviously they've kind of been a mainstay in the conference for a long long time uh, I believe UCLA has been good for a long, yeah. long time. It's going to be like Stanford, UCLA, USC, and then probably Arizona. Those are like the four like bigger ones that have historically been an issue. Right. But then again, you like the Pac-12 in women's basketball, I think is is very, very, very strong across the board. There's only one or two teams that are kind of like, eh. yeah. You yeah. have Oregon that's consistently really good. So you also have Oregon to throw that's on that mitch. But yeah. um I think that there's there's a very good chance that they could probably be like a two or a three seed, I think, heading into the conference tournament. That's just where I'm at right now. I know we haven't even hit conference play. They haven't even played their first conference game and they won't until the fourteenth of December. Um, but they do play BYU this weekend. So they sure do. That would be a huge step for Lynn to get a win over BYU because that's been kind of an Achilles heel the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, but this women's team, they're they're young, they're fun, and they're like they're feisty. They will like just beat the crap out of you. And it's, they, it's it's fun to watch, not gonna lie. I feel like they've taken on the personality of Alyssa Peely, and I think mm-hmm. that's a very, very good thing for this team. So if you haven't checked out the women's basketball team, highly suggest highly very fun they've been very fun lynn roberts has been working so hard uh has had a lot of setbacks with injuries over the years has been her biggest issue it's never in my opinion really been a talent issue it's been an injury issue and just getting absolutely decimated it finally all came together last year it's looking really good this year Go go and support them she also i will say this she has been one of the like She's hitting the portal. She's hit the portal hard, and she's come out with some big wins. Um, Peely's obviously the biggest, like, impact impact player that they've currently got out of the portal. Um, She came from USC. She was Pac-12 freshman of the year her first year at USC. So it's like she's really good, and Lynn was able to bring her in. So I think that's, like, that's what is huge. And I, I remember after the Oklahoma game, she said, like, the one thing we've been missing is like that, like big, tough center. Mm -hmm. And now we have it. And I was, I think that, that gave me chills. I like just said, like, I was like, Ooh, Lynn, like, yay. Yeah. Um, And I think, I think this team is, this team is really good. And and it's going to be a fun season. I think for both basketball teams, I think there's going to be a little bit more heartbreak when it comes to the men's team. But I think the women's team is, is going to be like right there, just Mm -hmm. in prime position. Yeah, it, it's looking a lot more promising and brighter on the basketball end for Utah, uh, which is a great thing because I feel like most fans, their fandom started with basketball. I, on the other hand, was always a football girl. Uh, same, same. <laughs> I, you know, I did not ever follow basketball as closely. Utah Jazz, men's, women's basketball. This is something that I've kind of learned to appreciate over the years. I am a football girl. Football girl is where I got my fandom from, where I got my interest in sports from. And uh, football, football had, I, football had, football a just had, they just had, a, they had a little thing, a little thing just, last you know, weekend. Just, just a little thing. I, I mean, they too beat the number four team in the country after the men's basketball team beat in, the number four team in the country which by the way the university has pointed out they are the only team to do so in back-to-back days which that that statistic is just wild in and of itself that I'm like like dang like all of these stars were aligning but they beat the number four team heavy 
handedly, I will yeah, say. Yeah, no, there there was no doubt. There there was no refereeing mishaps. There was no phantom passenger or uh, roughing the passer calls. Or, no, that perhaps yeah. swayed the game one way or the other. No, like, I mean, this was a full on beat down. Both you and I were there live in Las Vegas. Just initial thoughts in general. I remember just sitting there and being like, okay, the first like quarter when it was like that and like beginning of the second quarter when it was like that three to 17, I was like, oh God, I was like, strap in folks. It's going to be a long night. Like it's going to (laughs) be like Utah fans are going to be very upset Mm -hmm. come Saturday morning. Um, But then like, I think, I don't know like what clicked, but the team just like, they just we're like hey we're going for it and we're not coming down like yeah you can factor in Caleb Williams's injury but at the same time it's like Caleb Williams wasn't on defense so it's like the Utah's offense was just really good well and, and on they top just... of that I feel like what people have failed to talk about and yes I get it like Cam looks better but Cam's not exactly running on 100% either I mean yeah bulky knee brace really does affect what he tends to do as a quarterback too so he's on like he's on like one in a three-fourths leg it you know it's one of those things if we're going to talk about Caleb Williams battling through then I think we need to talk about Cam Rising battling through Uh, Mm -hmm. it but that's just me anyways continue um I it was just I think I think Utah like Utah had a blueprint on what to do to beat USC from when they beat USC earlier in the season. Um, you had seen a lot of other teams in the Pac-12 try and replicate that um, that like blueprint. Mainly, I would say you you the biggest one is UCLA. You look at that kind of had that same like game plan, mm-hmm. but um, Utah just said like, "Hey, well, we know it worked last time, so we're gonna do the exact same thing," and. At first, it was kind of rough. I I will admit it was a it was a very uncomfortable first like quarter and a half. Yes. Um, but things start finally started clicking. The defense got into the backfield. Cam looked more comfortable. Um, his wide receivers and tight ends were catching balls. You had the running backs, specifically JJ and Makai, were playing really well. Um, it was just honestly, it was a I'm going to say out of the, like the three aspects of football, you know, you have your offense, you have your defense, and you have your special teams. I'm going to say it was a two and a half, two and a half percent of the the unit showed out. They only get a half knocked off because of that mixed extra point. But like, <laughs> I think we all saw that one coming. We were all like, yeah, that one's. Something not... had to go wrong in the kicking game. Yeah. We we're like that. Cause there were, there was plenty of almost, well, there was also not a lot of like touchbacks, but then yeah. again, like there were quite a few that like are in the end zone or like on the goal line that USC was like, we're going to run this out. And then they got like 11 yards. I'm like, you should have just taken, you should have just taken the knee. You would have better field position. Yeah. Just, and that's like, that's like a little thing that like I've been focused on all season is the lack of touchbacks. Um, I've talked about it. No, it's most of us. Yeah. If, if, Here's the thing that people need to understand about the Utah media press box is uh, there have been cheers when there's been touchbacks. This there season. has been cheers down in the stadium too. Like I remember <laughs> sitting in res at in the press box during the Stanford game, I think it was, and they're kicking a touchback and everyone in the stadium just cheering. Cheered. And there were people cheering on in Vegas when there was a touchback too. It's like USC fan, fans probably think we're crazy because we're cheering for touchbacks. <laughs> for touchbacks. <laughs> But at this point, touchbacks are so like it's something that I think Utah fans took advantage of when we had it. We said, we said, oh, touchbacks. Mm-hmm. Utah definitely, Utah fans definitely took the special teams era for granted. Very much so. Very much um, so. We sacrificed a great special teams unit for uh better for, offense. For for better offense, yeah. For two for two Pac-12 championships and and two Rose Bowl berths. That's what we sacrificed it. You know what? It was worth it. It was. It was. It was worth, worth it. it. I Even think if a lot it's of painful in the moment. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> so I would say overall, it was a it was a really good performance. Um, there's just there's I think there's a lot more good to focus on in this game than bad, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I I I don't like talking about peaking in football sometimes, especially when you have the season that Utah has, where you have 
some really questionable in conference losses and even an out of conference loss that you look back on it now and you're like, how did you lose to Florida? But <laughs> at the same time, I think I think if Utah was to be peaking at the right time, I think now is like they're peaking right now. And I'm like, I would hate to be on Penn State and be lined up again like against this Utah, like either offense or defense, because they are like they're this confident. close. They're confident and they are so close to getting what they want and what they've been working for. And I think that like nothing is going to stop them. There were a couple of crazy things that happened in that game. Uh, The one is perusing the stat sheet. I noticed that Cam completed 22 passes. And again, Mm -hmm. these guys made it very, very, very clear uh, Friday night after the win that they are doing this for 22. So, you know, However, you may fill out there about the 22 thing and Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe, it is still a very, very much a thing with this team. It's still very much on their mind and it's part of what drives them. Proving that, I feel like Utah really, really, really put on the Jets Mm -hmm. after the moment of loudness. Like, oh, yeah. They were so juiced up after that. It literally. Literally, I felt like you could feel a momentum shift. Just it, it became very, very, very clear in my opinion. There was no stopping Utah after that. Utah was in it to win it, and oh my gosh, did they win it? Yeah, and I, I think the other thing is, is like you need the fans to have some form of like influence in this game, and not like all the time. Like I'm talking just like on third downs when the opposing team has the ball, you want them to be making noise, like. Utah USC fans kind of checked out but also kind of didn't like they were still there making noise when Utah had the ball on third down but it wasn't half as loud as it was like earlier in the game in my opinion sure. because I think they I think the USC fans started to see the writing on the wall and I think they started yeah. to check out because like when you get like when Utah gets going they're like a freight train that you can't stop uh-huh. um, and I think USC got that like the brunt of that experience um and like people like yeah they didn't get it last like earlier in October because of how close that game was but at the same time like Utah was like we're this is ours for taking Utah also thrives as an underdog and that's what Utah was everyone was our like Kyle Whittingham joked about in his press conference he was like yeah we took a team vote about if we should actually show up for this game because everyone already said they are going to the playoffs and they already had the Heisman Trophy winner like Utah thrives in that mentality and I think that it's it's like poking a bear it's like you shouldn't do that don't poke the bear don't give them bullet bulletin board material don't do anything like that because don't wit paint your fingernails yeah don't paint fingers. your fingernails because Wade like, knows what's gonna like he knows what he could get he knows how to motivate his team in the right way mm-hmm. so that they show up and they show out for these big games yeah I saw those fingernails before the game and I was like uh-oh I was like this ain't gonna end well <laughs> but then it looked scary but then it, it actually it did end the way that I kind of started getting the vibes that it would it was a very interesting game yeah. a very interesting matchup I feel like USC kind of came in very much underestimating their opponent and that that is always mistake number one I don't care who you are I don't care if you're USC I don't care if you're Utah you always go into a game with respect for your opponent and it was clear one side did that it was very clear the other side did not and I I mean we we see how that ultimately worked out um so I lessons there mm-hmm. always respect your opponent exactly <laughs> always respect your opponent it's like um, what says don't play down to them play at the level that like you know you can play at mm-hmm. for sure uh I mean let's talk about Jaquindon's emergence in the running back room like I, I mean uh, it's crazy he was in the quarterback room Mm -hmm. switched halfway through the year and again to be very clear this is not somebody that's unfamiliar with that position Mm -hmm. he played it before it's just been several years but how quickly he's picked it up at the collegiate level against not horrible teams crazy it's impressive and um he 
had 100 yards versus Colorado. He had 100 yards versus USC. If close things go against Arizona, he was very close. Three yeah. yards off against Arizona. Very close. Like he, he, there's a very good chance that in this Penn State game, he could go for, he could have three hundred yard games in a row. Um, I think, I think it's really great. And I, I remember that first week after he, he started playing running back and I, this has stuck with me all season is when he said, like, I found my joy again. Mm-hmm. And I think that was something that like a lot of Utah fans were like excited about because they were like, yeah, like JJ, like, look at him go. Like he's doing great. And like, I think a lot of Utah fans saw, like could tell that there was a chance that Jaquinnon would might not ever play quarterback because you had Cam, you have Bryson, you have um, Brandon Rose and you have Nate yeah. Johnson on roster. Plus you have Mac, John- Mac, Mac Howard, Howard. who's committed. <laughs> Mac- I keep wanting to say Mac Jones because I don't, because quarterback, um, but Mac Howard, who's committed, us. yeah, but <laughs> it's yeah. Oh God. But anyways, yeah. So you have you have like all these quarterbacks, and I think that I think yeah, it's. I'm glad that you're able to find like him somewhere to play, and that he wasn't like okay, well, I'm gonna leave then and transfer. But then again, I had a feeling like deep in my heart that I knew Jaquinnon wasn't gonna leave because I think he like he knows how much this program means to him and how much these fans, how much these fans care about him. And so well, with, and especially winning the scholarship, the Ty and Aaron scholarship this year, I think that was also something that was really big for him, but I, to it's going to be great. What I've gathered from, from just listening to him, observing him is he really feels like he has a job to finish at Utah for his mm-hmm. friends, uh, which for those unfamiliar with the story, he is largely at Utah because of Ty Jordan, because of Aaron Lowe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all grew up together. They they all kind of knew each other, gravitated in the same circle, ended up at the same college. The two people that he knew best on the team are no longer here. Mm-hmm. So uh, to me, it just feels like he feels a sense of purpose to finish what they wanted to accomplish at Utah. Uh, I think that's become very, very clear. It has. And I, I think I I've, I've said this and I think that this is something that I think is, it might happen is I have a feeling that since Mackay walked, I think most people are under the ins- like feeling that he's going to go to the next level or just leave or whatever. I do think Jaquinnon is probably going to be running back one. I think he has the skills he's already showing so much improvement from the first time he took snaps at running back this season to last week in the Pac-12 championship he's he's lowering his shoulder at the right time he's hitting the gaps he's turning on the boosters he's taking advantage of those holes that he is seeing and it's it's really great and I think him having a background as a quarterback is is very important because he's able to read the defenses before the defense's like the balls even snap like he knows some of these schemes and he knows some of these concepts from his past as a quarterback and like yeah he has to know how to change it on the fly because when you're in a a, a, like a read option like you as a quarterback you read option but if you're the running back you need to just run as if you're gonna get the ball so there's some like changes he has to make but Jaquindon has the talent and has the capabilities of becoming the starting running back at the University of Utah and I think that there's there's a very strong possibility that I think it might happen. We now we're going to get to see how truly he's going to develop because after this Rose Bowl, he's going to have all of spring ball and all of fall camp to get more used to this position. Mm-hmm. Um, he's already, I think he's more, he's, I think it's very clear to see that he's already more used to it than he has been. He was the first week, but now with a full off season, I think Jaquinnon is going to be a force to be reckoned with because He's just, he's a big back that I think that is just so powerful and so good that I, it's, it's going to be, I think he's the future of the running back room. That's, that's the, the, the moral of my long tangent is that. I I absolutely agree with you. I I've had a lot of people tell me they're very high on him. Um, just the, the big body, the fact that he can throw, throw people around the way mm-hmm. that he can and continue to get yak. Um, yards after carry like is just it's it's crazy and you add in the wrinkles 
that you can add in because he was a quarterback. And we've already seen this a few times where they've had Cam kick out to a wide receiver position and he's taken the snap. And mm-hmm. like, there's just all kinds of things that you can do with a guy with the type of background that Jaquindon has from a, the fact that he's been playing quarterback uh, to just the fact that he is an athletic freak. Like I, there, there are just very few people built and designed like Jaquindon Jackson. And I said that, sorry, one sec. I said this last week. Um, he is built like Zach Charbonnet. There you go. Yeah. At the running back at UCLA. He has one inch on, on Charbonnet. I think Charbonnet's six one. I think Jaquinnon's six two. Yeah. And Charbonnet's two twenty and Jaquinnon's two twenty seven, I think. So like if Char like Charbonnet is going to probably play at the next level. He's going to play oh, in the no NFL. Doubt. He's, he's so going to play good. at the NFL. And so and I said this prior to the, the Pac twelve championship game. I said USC had a hard time t- controlling Zach Charbonnet. If they can get Jaquindon going, they're going to struggle because Jaquindon is another physical big back just like Charbonnet. So I that's sorry, that's just a side note that I for, that I that you just that just popped into my head that, yes. from what you were talking about. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I I apologize. No, I'm going to good. I I am always here for a little move the chains and Charbonnet discussion. Mm-hmm. So Yes, yes, always here for that. That's a great comparison. Uh, I think the future is bright for Jaquindon. Honestly, real quick, I think the future is just super bright for Utah football in general. Uh, We've seen a couple of interesting commits. It's sounding like a few others are perhaps on the way. Uh, mm-hmm. Just talk about, you know, recruiting really quick before we move on to our final sport that we need to touch on. Um, I'm going to just say this. Hold on to your butts because yes. things are going. So signing day will be the 21st of December. That is a couple weeks from now, two weeks, I think. Um, hold on to your butts. There are. I, I have a feeling that this is probably going to be a wild sprint to the finish for Utah, but just keep in mind that there will be some guys um, like Walker Lyons, who's decommitted from Stanford and is a big tight end prospect for Utah, who won't be signing until February. Um, but I think Utah's hoping to have a majority of the class like locked in in December. Um, I'm just going to say hold on to your buds because I just know that this is going to be uh, this is going to be a wild ride. I think Utah fans are going to enjoy it. Um, I think. Spencer Fano committing on Monday night was just the first of many oh, dominoes. Yeah. Yep. Dominoes that are going to just come on tumbling down. You know, pe- kids want to play for a team that's won back-to-back ch- conference championships and that want that is playing in back-to-back Rose Bowls. So I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. So hold on to your butts. Yes. I, there's a lot to look forward to there. Obviously, keep your eyes on Ute Zone. I will also have some coverage on that as well. Uh, it, it is. It's. I expect it to be full blown crazy. Uh, I expect to maybe not get a whole lot of sleep because uh, this stuff is going to happen so fast and so quick on yep. this. Uh, but people have been upset and concerned about. I think a Rose Bowl bump and that we didn't necessarily see that early on. I think we're seeing it now. We're seeing it now. Rose Bowl. Yeah, we're seeing it now. And I think uh, it's it's just going to get better from here for Utah recruiting, I think. is I think that's the uh, – that's what I've been feeling and hearing is that it's just going to – it's just, it's just going to get better because, you know, you have stability in coaching. You have a great program. You have great development mentalities. You have great fans. You have great facilities. You have great everything – and now you're finally, all of those great things are finally adding up to those championships and those Rose Bowl births and maybe one day even a playoff berth. Like you're getting those things. You're crossing off a lot of those boxes of things that kids want. And so I think that's the uh, that's the biggest part is just the best days are yet to come, I think. Yes, completely agree. Talking about another winner, consistent winner, 40 plus years of winning constant winning lots of winning 10 championships type of winning uh utah gymnastics will have their preview on friday sammy you're a big gymnastics freak you actually understand it i think a lot better than i do what are you looking forward to most in this preview in the season ahead for the red rocks 
Um, so the thing is, I like to preface with the preview is the preview is kind of like a spring game. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see a lot. Well, you're going to see like all the routines and stuff like that. But sometimes you're going to see them with spot like people like spotters and like whatever. But like, it's like a spring game. So just yeah. keep that in mind. But I think I'm very excited about the depth. I think that this team has, um, one of the biggest and probably my favorite addition of this entire cycle was Abby Brenner. Um, the transfer, Michigan. the national champion transfer from Michigan, um, coming to Utah, um, just for her fifth year, just as a grad transfer. She, she is going to give a much, much, much needed boost to that vault lineup. That's been the event that Utah has been consistently struggling with, mm-hmm. um, as the, like the last, the last two or three years is what I want to say. Um, you obviously have Jaden Rucker, who is the, the national champion on vault, but, you need you need six girls to throw tens. Like you can't be throwing four tens and two nine nine fives in this world that we're in with college gymnastics. Now you need to be throwing tens all the time on vault. And so I think Brenner really gives that that boost in the vault area. You also have two talented freshmen in McKenna Smith and Sarah Crump join the team. McKenna is a very highly decorated gymnast, and I think she's going to be great on this team. Um, Sarah's also, she's a local prospect who, well, she, she grew up locally and then moved to Vegas or New Mexico. I can't remember if she get I get confused, but like you have her come in and then you have just the same, the same core as you had last year. You do lose a couple pieces, but not like, you're not losing like your starting quarterback. Like that's, you're not losing that with this, this Red Rocks team this year. So it's Miley O'Keefe. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert. If you want to know who the cam rising is of this Utah football team, it's Miley O'Keefe, but um, it's going to be, I think this is, this season's very, it's going to be very good. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how these things shake up. You have your first like real test of the season, the first week of the season versus LSU. Um, So that's going to be fun. It's at the Huntsman center, which is always always a great environment to go to a gymnastics meet at the Huntsman Center. That place is packed. It's rocking and it's fantastic. But the depth of this team is, is, is really magnificent. I think it's something that has been weakness at times for certain Mm -hmm. events, but I think finally Tom Farden's building up that, like that good depth. I'm also excited to see Kara Aker in a full season, hopefully, yeah, knock on yeah, wood. Fingers crossed. Um, um, because, you know, she got hurt in that first meet versus in the Best of Utah and then didn't really come back until yeah. tail end of the season, like like regionals and nationals. So I'm excited for that. Obviously, you know, take this whole Red Rock preview with a grain of salt because they're not competing against anybody and there's no official scores given. So you just kind of have to wing it um, when it comes to scoring. So... It's it's this this team is very fun. Like I love this gymnastics team like a lot. So. Yeah, they're they are super fun. We plug the women's basketball team. Go go show up. Go support them. Also show up and support the Red Rocks. They have a very big season ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of big matches actually yeah. coming to the Huntsman Center. Uh, that I, I mean, frankly, I don't remember a time that the schedules looked quite like this so last seasons was pretty good I will say that but like this season you get UCLA at home which is always a fun fun meet Mm -hmm. um you get LSU you know it's it's gonna be a good time and I expect these girls to be really really good once again uh we we will have coverage of that event on kslsports.com uh as well as Ute Zone and uh, I think Sammy is someone that I'm going to have to have come back on to do a lot more talk on Red Rocks once we kind of get a better feel as to what exactly this team is looking like and who they're going to be. But we are just about out of time. So I'm going to sign this thing off for this week. You have been listening to The Crimson Corner with my good friend Sammy Mora at UteZone.com. I am, of course, your host, Michelle Bachman, your Utah Utes insider. And until next time, as always, go Utes.